insanity is doing the same thing over and over again and expecting different results. But if you're ready to level up your life and get results that truly matter in your health, business, mindset, and relationships, then this is the podcast for you. Welcome to Sheer Madness, where we have unscripted, real conversations with the world's top athletes, entrepreneurs, and coaches. Discover real world and tactical advice from the best in the business. Let's go. All right, everyone. Welcome back to another episode of Sheer Madness. I have an incredible guest today, Emily Hayden. She is a long-term friend, and we've actually known each other since 2016 when we competed together in NPC national competitions, uh, junior nationals is I think where we met. And Emily was just this radiance and this light and she actually prayed for everybody in the circle before we all went on stage. And I was just like, who is this girl? She just has this (laughs) incredible light about her. Mm -hmm. And that is really carried with her through every encounter that we've had. Um, We also both work with a lot of similar companies between First Form and Transcend. Emily is the owner of Evolve X Mentorship Program, which is a 90-day physical and mental transformation. And she's also the host of the Evolve with Emily podcast, which is crushing it. And one of the big reasons why I wanted to bring Emily on the show today, besides the fact that she's just an all-around badass and crushing it in all of these different areas, is that I've always just been immensely drawn to her energy. And I actually had an experience recently and I was talking with her while I was at the airport on Sunday because you're supposed to do this podcast um, on Monday, but then I got stranded in an airport and I was so stressed out. And I don't know if you guys have ever met um, people in the airport, but just everybody is so grumpy and mean and doesn't want to give you the time of the day. And it just made my day so emotional. And I met this woman actually at the airport and she just was this light. And she just was like, do you need a hug? She gave me a hug and I was like crying. And she just had this radiance and this light about her. And in this moment, she just completely turned my day around. And I was like, this woman is just literally working in an airport, but she is living her purpose. And then I watched her do this with people after people who came up to her and everybody was so grateful because everyone around her was just like, you know, no one really cared about anybody else. And I was actually talking with Emily that day and she was like, there is a purpose as to why you're here, why you had to miss the flight. And it couldn't have been any more true. And I thought of you, Emily, in that instance, because I feel like you are that in so many ways, you are always like this light and this radiance. And I feel like there's a lot of people that we meet that are either energy takers or energy givers. And I feel like that's one of the beautiful gifts that you have is you're always giving energy to everybody that you meet. So um, I wanted just to start out today's podcast by um, A, welcome you on the show. (laughs) Hello, everyone. Um, Thanks for having me. (laughs) And also just kind of, I want to pick your brain because I feel like it is very rare um, to kind of have that. And you're someone who is so self-aware. And I know that faith has played a huge role and you talk about that very openly on your podcast, but just kind of diving right into it today. How did you kind of get into this place where you're at and you have so much of this self-awareness that you have today? That is a great question. And before I dive in, I just have to say thank you so much for the most beautiful intro. More than an intro, I just really appreciate the fact that you speak out what you see in me because I think we need more people that do that for each other. They speak out the good things that they see in each other. So I just want to say thank you so much. My life has been so blessed by having you in it. And I've really enjoyed these later years where we've really started to develop a friendship. And every time I see you at like a first form event or, you know, any events that we end up running into each other at, it's always been so nice, whether it's fix- fixing each other's lashes at first form <laughs> summer smash or just being there for each other. I've always really appreciated our friendship and what that's turning into. So thank you for being just a really good, solid friend who is able to speak into my life. I value that so much. So thank you. And now getting into self-awareness. It was December of 2016 when I had this kind of awakening moment where I realized that I had two choices in front of me. I either had to choose 
to remain the same and to live with where my life was at, live with the suffering, live with everything that I was experiencing at that time, which is what was a lot of heartache, a lot of failed, um, failed things that I went after, um, failed relationship, just all these things. I either had to live with it or had to choose to evolve. So I literally in that moment had to choose that I would either evolve or die. And I know that's a really um, intense way to describe it, but I truly believe that people have two options in life. It's to evolve or die because you can, you don't have to wait until your deathbed to actually die. There's so many people that are walking around in this life and they're dead inside. And I didn't want to be dead inside. And because of that, I knew that I had to face the uncomfortable parts of myself. Part of self-awareness is understanding and realizing that you're going to start to become aware to these certain truths about yourself that don't look pretty and people who don't want to know the truth they're going to turn a blind eye every single time but people who want to say okay even if it's ugly even if it's something I don't want to know or don't want to see I want to know so that I can be better and it's just having this mindset and this mentality that if I'm here on earth there's a reason and there's a purpose. And I have the utmost responsibility to make the most out of this one day that I've been gifted. I hope I get a bunch of days in a row. I hope I get the next year. I hope I get the next five years. But if I don't, I'm going to know damn well sure that I live this day my best, that I did my best to grow even that 1%. So initially in this first phase of personal development. Um, in growing in self-awareness, one of the biggest things that really helped me was reading books, listening to podcasts, uh, listening to other speakers, and you know, doing diving deep into this personal development work, as well as looking at my journal entries, right? I was journaling a lot, and I still journal to this day, um, but really taking an, an objective look at where my thought pod patterns were at, right? So one of the first things I think is very helpful when you're trying to become more aware is to have things and people in your life that will reflect back to you the truth of who you are. And again, that can be really difficult and don't place that power in anyone's hands. I would never place that power in my social media feed, right? I'm not going to let thousands of people online tell me what they see in me. I'm going to have a few trusted friends mm -hmm. who share similar core values, who are also on their journey of evolving, on their journey of being their best self. I'm going to ask them. And there's one thing I did actually to do this years ago. I created this anonymous quiz online and there's like a website and it's free. And so I created an anonymous quiz and I'm such a psychopath for doing this. I sent it to all my closest family and friends. And I was like, look, it's anonymous. I'm not going to know who said what, but I genuinely want a, a realistic look at me and my areas of growth and what you think I could do better. And you know, I got a lot of feedback and it was funny because there was one where my brother gave me some cold, hard truth and it was so written in his language. I knew exactly that it was him, <laughs> but it was what I needed to hear, you know, and it was so interesting because everything that he said is actually now an active part of my life. You know, he, he and I'll just, I'll share it actually mm -hmm. at that point in time. And this is probably back in like 2016 or so. Um, he mentioned that I'm oblivious to what is happening in the real world, like in the news and, you know, not just the news, but like what's happening outside of my little bubble. I was so focused in my work, so focused on my personal development that I was really unaware to some larger, you know, world topics. And, you know, that comes from me working so much and so long, I just didn't really take a moment to like stop and look up. And so when he said that, I was like, you know what, he's right. I'm, I'm not educated on these things. I don't know what's going on in the world. So I need to start doing that for myself, you know, and now fast forward to 2000, end of 2021, I'm very like hyper aware to what's going on in the world, you know, and now like I realize how important it is. So I'm so thankful that someone I love was able to give me that cold, hard truth, which in the moment might've felt a little bad, but it allowed me the opportunity to say, you know what, I'm going to decide with my own free will that that's something I would like to improve. So I'm going to improve upon it. Mm -hmm. So that's kind of how I started with my self-awareness books, podcasts, trusted friends, uh, mentors, coaching, just all of the personal development stuff. And I fell in love. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we both relate to that in so many different ways. And I feel like we've had a very similar journey. Mm -hmm. um, was there any kind of moment for you that like was like, okay, I need to dive in and do the work, like any like specific thing that happened. Cause I know that for a lot of people, things may not be like good, but they're not normally sometimes bad enough in my opinion. And I know very often, like we have to sometimes get to that pain point to really look at some of those hard truths, like you mm -hmm. said, because 
it is really, really hard and uncomfortable sometimes to face those things, whether it's trauma that we've kind of stuffled, put in a box and put in, you know, far, far away. And then it kind of just rears its head every now and then, or it is, you know, other people's opinions about us. But like you said, opinions who matter, we shouldn't care about like what all the social media thinks. Mm -hmm. Um, but care about what the people who matter in our lives do think to an extent. And uh, it sounds like you just kind of reached this point where you're like, okay, I'm going to go all in. Was there any specific things that happened in your life at that point to just decide to do the work? Yeah, I would have to say that it was my marriage failing and the awareness that it was failing and the heartbreak that that was causing. I never in a million years planned to get divorced. I don't think anyone plans to get divorced. And I had always said I would never do that because my parents you know, went through that and it was really difficult for me. Um, and so it was like my whole world was crashing down around me because the one thing that I tried so hard in this life not to let happen was happening right before my eyes. And so I was so crushed. I was so defeated, but I just also realized I was like, I am here on earth to live a good life. I'm here to be purposeful. I'm here to be better than where I currently am. So I've got to dig in. I've got to do the work and I've just got to believe that there's more meant for my life. I'm not meant to stay stuck in a relationship that's at a dead end. I am meant for more. I am meant for greatness and I'm going to believe in that. And it's only going to happen from me facing the hard truths and realities of where I can improve. And I'll tell you the first few things that really helped me to open my awareness to things I could improve on are two books. Um, one is the four agreements by Don, Mc Don McGrill Ruiz. I literally just read that book. Like this oh, you month. did? Yeah, yes. It's so good. It was one. So I have it and I try to reread it every yeah. now and then because, you know, you become aware to it and you try to, you know, change how you're doing things. And then years go by and you don't realize, oh, I've started to make assumptions again, not on purpose, but like in conversations with people you love, you're assuming that you know what they think, or you're assuming the answer to something, right? So that's one of the four agreements. Um, but that book really helped me to realize how, for example, one of the four agreements is do not take things personally. And it really revealed to me in the long form explanation in the book, which everyone should go read. And it really revealed to me how many things I was taking personally. For example, someone at the grocery store treating me horribly. And like, I just came in there happy and they treated me so badly. And then I would be so upset about it. I would talk about it all day. And I just couldn't believe that someone could treat me that way when I didn't do anything, not having the awareness that other people's actions have nothing to do with us. Mm -hmm. Their actions are an inside reflection of what's going on in them. Maybe she just got horrible news that day and it doesn't, it doesn't um, make what she did. Okay. It's not justifying any wronged behavior or any behavior at all. It's just giving more compassion to understand that I don't have to take on that negative energy and emotion because instead of just kind of looking at her and saying, oh, she must be having a really hard day or, oh, she's working through a lot. Right. Or, oh, she's projecting what's going on inside and having that awareness. I decided to carry that negative energy with me all throughout the day. Another book that was really good was The Way of the Peaceful Warrior. And I don't remember uh, the author at this very moment in time, but you can search it up, The Way of the Peaceful Warrior. And it's this like story type of book. And in the story, there's lots of lessons. And there's this guy and this old mentor. And it was just, it's funny because I was in bikini prep. And when you're in prep, you are so regimented with your meals. And sometimes when you eat your meals, you eat really fast because you're really hungry, right? And there's this one part in the book where the mentor looks at his mentee who's eating and says, slow down, you might taste something. And for some reason, that was just so impactful for me. It was so huge for me because I realized not only in my meal was I just, I wasn't even tasting it. I was just throwing it down, you know, because I was such in a habit of like bodybuilding. But I realized that in my entire life, I was missing the beautiful flavor of life. I was walking from my place to the gym in Venice, California, without looking up, you know, without recognizing the beautiful, you know, wind and the leaves and the beautiful flowers and birds and just all these tiny little moments that can help you to be present. I realized that I was never fully present. I was actually always just rushing to the next thing. So I, I missed a lot of moments in my life because I was always focused kind of like on a racetrack. I was just focused on that finish line, not with the awareness that the finish line always moves. So if you never stay present, you never get to actually experience the fullness 
of life that's already right there in front of you. And that's the thing. Life is so full. Life is so vibrant. People just sometimes don't have the right lenses and like right perspective in order to see it. We have all of these everyday occurrences that steal the joy from us because we allow it. It's a choice. Being joyful is not a circumstance. It's not an environment even. It's an inside job and it's an inside choice. So no matter what you're going through, joy can be present. It is just a difficult decision. It's not always easy. So I think those two books were definitely my like kind of beginning uh, kick kick off to me becoming more aware to these habits, patterns, um, and these things that I was kind of stuck in and breaking free from those things. Yeah, I think that's very powerful. And I've read the four agreements. I need to check out that second one that you talked about. And I, I think books are really important because we have thoughts that have just been honestly on repeat for most of our life based off of the way we were raised, based off of our environment. And it's like, if we want to really change, we start, have to start thinking in completely different ways. And it sounds like for you, books, podcasts, getting around different people who also want to grow better themselves, not talk about people, but talk mm -hmm. about real meaning thing, meaningful things have really, really helped you. And I love what you said about slowing down and being present because I literally wish I could open my journal right now and show you because a quote I wrote in there this week said, slow down to go fast. Yes. And I think being both of us in like bodybuilding, personal development, it's very like high achieve, go, 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 more is better type mindset. And I even know for myself, a lot of times, like that's served me in many ways, but it's also been a double-edged sword where it's why I probably developed a lot of my gut issues and hormone issues and all of those things, which I'm still so grateful for that happened because I wouldn't be where I'm at today. And I bet you can even look back at even things that yes, have been terrible, like a divorce, but now you're this incredible woman that you are today and helping so many people because of what you had went through. But I just thought that was so interesting that you mentioned that just like the whole mm -hmm. slowing down and being present, because I think it's, it's right. We're always just trying to reach the next thing, hit the next mm -hmm. goal. And I know that was really, really hard, um, being in fitness. Like it was almost like never enough kind of mm -hmm. type mindset. And I'm actually kind of curious as to how that has shifted for you since being in bodybuilding and competing and kind of the way you view things and health and how now you maybe you view things differently maybe mm -hmm. similar in some ways too because I think at the core right personal development and fitness that's so so essential but I think sometimes there's a shift in what exactly that means right mm -hmm. absolutely it's such a great question and you know topic that you're bringing up it's funny because earlier this week I think it was actually on Monday I had this realization that I had fallen back into the trap of go, go, go 365, like just working nonstop. And it didn't come from a conscious intentional decision. That's actually part of me falling back into my old habits and patterns where, you know, I'll be on calls and meetings and filming. And then if I'm not, I'm right to my computer to work every single second, like even while eating, right? Like not even taking intentional breaks to eat. And I didn't realize how quickly that kind of crept up crept up on me. So this week I made a, a point that if I didn't have an actual appointment or something to film or, you know, something that I had to be at, I actually took some moments of stillness this week and it, man, it recentered me so quickly. So yeah, to go back to your question, you know, when I first started getting into fitness, I was still pretty unconscious in a lot of my patterns. You mentioned this a little bit earlier, but our past plays a lot into our current patterns and habits. And, you know, I went through a lot of traumatic things growing up and my way of coping was working really hard and working all the time. And so that became my pattern and habit and it actually served me really well for competing because with competing, you have to have that drive. You have to have that. And people would always ask like, how did you get that drive? And the truth is, you know, my dad will always say like, I was driven from a young age, but going through a lot of the things that I went through gave me a drive and a hunger like no other. And so it's funny how even hard and, you know, quote unquote, bad things that could happen to us 
actually ended up serving us in the next season. So for that season of my life, that competing season, it totally served me. I was able to crush it. I was able to have, you know, incredible seasons. I was able to go pro inside of the IFBB Pro Bikini League, which is a huge dream and goal of mine. Um, and then after a certain season, it stopped serving me because I was operating at such a high level for so long. I didn't know how to come back down and it actually ended up hurting me um, and my you know, health and my hormones kind of took a hit from it. And that's when I learned how important it is to have push and pull seasons. So seasons where you're pushing and then a season where you kind of pull back from that push mentality and you're doing more rest, you're doing more recharging, you're you know, taking more time, you're taking an extra rest day if you need to, because I really do firmly believe in both seasons. And I think there's a time and a place for everything. There's a time for it to be a push season in your life. And I think there's a time for it to be a pull season. Though I will say even how I do the push season now compared to how I would do the push season previously will look completely different because now I understand the importance and the requirement of rest and recovery and mental health and making sure that I'm operating at my 100% best, which doesn't mean, you know, pushing 100% through everything, team no sleep, you know, for hustle kill. No, it means optimizing everything, optimizing my sleep, my recovery, my spiritual growth, my mental health, my training, my food. I'm looking at optimizing myself as a whole from the inside out in every single capacity. And when I'm doing that, I know that I can achieve far more than if I just focus on work, hustle, kill, no sleep. <laughs> I love that. And I think that is really important for everybody to hear because, you know, it's either like, go, 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 don't sleep. And sometimes almost like burnout is like a status symbol nowadays with like the more tired you are, the more exhausted you are, the more successful you are. Um, and then on the opposite end too, my dog, <laughs> my dog, I cuddled her and she's like, let me out, let me out. <laughs> Leave that in there. They were good up until now. Um, but how do you kind of differentiate for yourself when it's time to slow down? Okay. I need to take a step back now. I've been pushing. Maybe I'm getting close to maybe being in kind of like a burnout. Mm -hmm. Um, and I think there's sometimes there's those moments of like, okay, I just, I need to just keep going and get through this kind of like mm -hmm. that mindset. And there's times where it's like, you, you just need to rest like your body. Like you said, I need those moments of just grounding myself, of being present, of breathing in this moment. And I don't need to continue to push. How have you kind of had that self-awareness to try to determine when to push and when to kind of pull back? So this actually plays into my faith because it says, it says that God gives his beloved rest and he gives us peace. And so when I recognize that I'm operating out of a state of kind of like this push, 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 and this like anxiety, anxious, you know, just, it's like the inside of me is, is all the way at capacity. When I recognize that, I realize that I'm not I'm doing everything in my own will. And the truth is, if I'm living in my purpose, living in my calling, God's given me a grace for that. And that should come with peace. It should come with ease. It should come with rest. That doesn't mean we're not going to work hard. It doesn't mean we're not going to hustle. Like I am so everybody who's followed me for a long time knows I am. I love to work hard, you know, and that's the thing is you will be rewarded for what you work hard for, but you can't do it at the expense of your peace at the expense of some of the most important things around you, which could be your relationships, your family, your significant others. So I always ask myself, you know, what is the cost of what I'm doing? And if that cost is costing me my inner peace, my joy, my fulfillment, my connection to God, even then it's not worth it to me. So for me, I would rather go at a little bit of a quote unquote, slower pace. And here's the thing, the world operates at such a, just a different operating level than the spiritual world and the, you know, I kind of view it as like, we have a higher calling in life if we choose to see it and seek it out. And so I think that spiritually and then just physically, they're two completely different operating systems. And it's really hard because everything that we can visually see in the world tells us that hustle kill, no sleep mentality, grind mentality, right? And also to be self-seeking and self-serving in everything that you do. The spiritual side of it says, actually rest, actually have moments of stillness. And it actually says to serve the greater good, not just serve your own needs. 
And yes, you can have what you want, but it's not always wise to fulfill every single desire, it's selfish desire, self-serving desire that you have. You know, what are you, what are you doing? How are you using your gifts and your talents for the greater good? So I always try to ask myself, am I operating out of this physical world reality or am I operating out of the spiritual reality? And anytime I find myself reaching burnout, I realize that I've been operating in this physical world reality and that I've also been gaining my encouragement, my guidance, my quote unquote wisdom from a lot of physical world versus spiritual. And for me, when I'm gaining these things from the spiritual world, I am more at ease. I'm more at peace. I'm more at rest. I actually accomplish more and I do a better job at it. (laughs) Completely agree with like what you're saying about like slowing down um, in order to go fast. And I even know for myself personally, like in the moments where I've actually took a time to like enjoy what I'm in, whether it's like my workouts, whether it's like my coaching calls, whether it's like trying to find the ways, like you said, to just like notice the beauty around me. I actually ended up getting that much better results because I think sometimes we're so focused on getting to the end goal. We kind of lose sight and we're kind of putting our our values even sometimes in the wrong things. And what I'm kind of hearing from you is you check in with yourself, kind of how is this feeling in my body? How is this feeling in my heart? How is this feeling in my soul? And if I notice any kind of unease, agitation, anxiety, I know maybe I'm focusing on the wrong things. And that's kind of when you ultimately pull back. Um, I've heard you talk a little bit about having more of like a victor mindset versus a victim mindset. I think that would be so incredible for the audience to hear kind of the difference between those two types of mindset and how that's played a role in your coaching and even your life too. Yeah, absolutely. It's something I speak a lot on and I talk about in my EvolveX course as well, but I think it's really important to always ask yourself, am I having a victor or a victim mentality? A victim mentality is going to tell you all the reasons why you can't do whatever it is you're going after, whether it's losing weight and you're saying, well, my genetics or well, my schedule or well, this, right? People will make every excuse in the, in the world and they'll justify it, right? Mm-hmm. And as to why they can't do these things that they want to do for themselves. And the thing is, you have to realize what kind of result does that produce for you? That result, that way of thinking has you stuck. So do you want to continue in that way of thinking? Or would you like to have the victor mentality, which says, I I recognize and acknowledge everything that I am up against, but you know what? I'm going to choose to believe in myself because here's the thing. Nobody has to believe in you in order for you to get to where you're going, just you. So why don't you choose to be the person that believes in yourself enough to go after these things and where our thoughts go, that's what shapes our physical reality around us, right? So if we're constantly thinking, I can't do this, I'm, you know, out of shape, my genetics are holding me back um, for, you know, I've competed for so long, I'm just ruined beyond repair, I can't repair myself, I can't heal, That is exactly what you're going to manifest because where our thoughts go, our actions go. So it's not some like fake manifesting thing. If you're thinking these things, I guarantee you your actions align with where your thoughts are. So choose the victor mentality of I can do this. I will figure out a way. If this current method isn't it, I'll keep going until I find out what is. If I have to try 33 times and I fail 33 times, I will try 34th time. It's the no BS mentality that says I can and will get to my end goal. I love that. And I've actually, um, I'm reading this book recently and it's called, um, what I'm blanking on, Think Again. I don't know if you've heard of it by Adam Grant. I have heard of it, but I haven't read it yet. It's a really, really good one. We'll have to swap with the ones that you Mm -hmm. mentioned here, but he talks about a term in there called confident humility. And Mm -hmm. I love that term. And this has just been like the word of the year for me, because basically it means I'm confident in myself. Mm -hmm. I know that I can do the work and I can achieve whatever I set my mind to, but I'm also humble to the fact that I don't have all the tools. I don't have all the answers. I may not even be connected to all of the right people that I need to. So I'm going to continue to remain curious, try to learn, try to go, but I'm confident in myself in my ability. And I had actually heard you talk a little bit about something similar in my mind on your podcast. And you were talking about being teachable in being curious and how you try to go into every encounter with that. What does that mean to you being teachable, but also being curious? 
I have this way of living, this way of life where I always want to be a student. I always want to learn. And having that kind of mentality, it can take you out of your ego because sometimes our ego will place us on this pedestal, right? It's like me walking into a gym. I've been training for more than 15 years now, right? And being like, oh, I got this versus, you know, me walking into the gym with other people and saying, oh, hey, what do you know? What can you teach me? And then I'm able to learn a new move. I'm able to learn something that I didn't know before. Now I'm even more equipped. So I think it's important to always be a student, to always have this eagerness to learn, because if you do, you're going to experience so much more beautiful parts of life. You're going to have more tools inside of your toolkit than before. It's kind of like somebody that walks around thinking that they've kind of got it all figured out. They have like six tools in their toolkit and somebody that knows that they're a student knows that there's always so much more to learn. They're going to have a hundred piece toolkit. So with any scenario that comes across, they're going to be like, I got something for that, you know? And if I don't, I'm going to learn and ask somebody who does. So for me, it's just provided for better, deeper conversations. It keeps, it absolutely keeps me humble. Um, and that's why one way that I like to practice this, this student mentality is by doing things that are completely out of my comfort zone and doing things that I'm not used to doing to where I have to be a beginner and I have to suck. And I always say like, be willing to suck because if you think you're going to be great the first time that you do something, you're wrong. Chances are it's going to take quite a few times. And that's the thing. I don't mind sucking. I don't mind sucking at something because I'm really confident in my work ethic. I'm really confident that I'll do what I say I'm going to do. So if I start something and I want to get you know good at it and I commit to it, I know for sure that I'm going to follow through. So one way, again, that I like to practice that is just by trying new things. And it could be literally anything like you know yoga or cycling or gun course or survival course or an obstacle course. I like to do fun, challenging things that maybe I haven't done before. What is something you've done recently that you were like, oh my gosh, I suck at this, but I want to get really, really good at it? Jiu-jitsu, actually. Um, Jiu yeah. I So the first time that I did a little bit of jiu-jitsu was at my friend, our friend, actually, from First Form, Tony, um, his Real World Tactical on Instagram, mm -hmm. um, his survival course. We did a little bit of jiu-jitsu, and I was like, wow, this is really cool. I wish I could do it. <laughs> you know, yeah. and they, they taught us a few moves, so we were, you know, very capable in a small way. Um, but I was like, you know what, I actually want to learn this. So I joined a jiu-jitsu gym nearby and throughout the summer, I was going every single week, two times a week. Sometimes I'd get in a third session a week. Uh, and then I, for the fall started traveling a ton. So I've taken a little break, but yesterday I was looking up, um, some private instruction options, uh, because I want to get back into it before mm -hmm. my next thing that I do, which is, um, another like training course of jiu-jitsu and, pistols, um, like gun training. So, you know, that kind of stuff is very exciting and fun for me. And it's also yeah. a huge confidence boost, um, especially with jiu-jitsu because truly like anyone can do jiu-jitsu no, ma no matter what you weigh or how big or small you are. And it's really empowering as a woman to, you know, learn these techniques and these moves and then for them to actually work, you're kind of like, yes, you know, do you guys remember the scene in Lion King where I forget her name, but um, Simba's little friend, like they're, you know, wrestling and stuff. And then she kind of like pushes him down on the mat. I totally had one of those moments, um, yeah. in practice one day and the other guy on the, you know, didn't know, but I kind of in my head was like, yes, <laughs> I can totally see you doing that. Yeah. Um, and me and Emma are actually going to potentially do, uh, I think forget what it was called, but pistol shooting, gun, all the gun stuff. I'm not, guns and geese. Guns and geese. <laughs> yes. <laughs> so I'm going to get out of my comfort zone with her here in the next couple of months. And I'm nervous, but super excited about that as well. But I'm sure the listeners um, really are curious about like what your morning routine looks like. And I know I'm curious about that because for me, um, with what I do also as a coach and mm -hmm. fitness and nutrition and being in the personal development world, that's like been my key mm -hmm. to kind of stay in the place that I'm at and also reassess and do a lot of my work. So what does your morning routine currently look like? So I currently have a few ingredients that I have inside of my morning routine every single day, no matter when I do it, or, you know, I, I like to prioritize getting up while it's still dark before my puppies are up. I have two dogs, one's four years old, one's a puppy puppy. So I've been back into puppy training and I didn't realize that the last, you know, few months or so 
that I had started doing my morning routine while the puppies are right there. And every two minutes, I'm like stopping to like, you know, tell them to chill or whatever. And so I really was feeling really off and I couldn't figure out why. And I realized it's because I, I need to wake up before the puppies are up, like before the kids are up, I need to get up and have my mom time alone. <laughs> and so I started doing that recently again. So I'm doing my morning routine before they're awake and it's just quiet inside of the house. And there's something about just the morning stillness that allows me to really connect inside with myself and to connect with God as well. And I would say coffee, warm coffee in the morning <laughs> is a must for me. Um, and then I get into the word. Uh, I use the Passion Translation, which is a Bible that's written in, um, it's written in order to express the overall message of uh, the Bible versus a like word for word uh, translation. And it's really cool. It's really spoken to my heart a lot. So I use that translation a lot of the time and I'll get into the word and I will take the word and then apply it to my life and my journaling. So in my journaling, I'll vent if I need to vent and kind of like brain dump anything that I feel I'm experiencing. And then I'll, you know, write down my major takeaways from the reading that I had read. I'll, I always write down my prayers because I like to keep track of them. And what's cool about that is I can go back in my journaling and sometimes I don't even realize it because it happens slowly, but sometimes I look back and I'm like, oh my gosh, I've been praying for all these things. And now they're just like a normal everyday part of my life. And sometimes you don't even realize it because it's not always this like massive answer prayer that happens. Right. But sometimes it's these like little small things. So for me, having documentation of that really helps because it also builds my faith in times where I feel like my faith is like having a, a rough patch, right? Like I don't feel as connected. I don't feel like I'm hearing God, which I think is just a normal part of the faith journey. So it's really encouraging to me to have that. Um, and so, yeah, just the reading, the praying, the journaling, I usually have a little bit of music and those things are essential every single morning, followed by the cutest puppy kisses in the world from my two Frenchies. Guys, her puppies are so cute. And you guys know I'm all about Frenchies too, because of Lily. I have a Frenchie. We're gonna have mm -hmm. a Frenchie, a Frenchie party sometime <laughs> soon. She just has she has a baby new Frenchie though right now. He's, he's so cute. He's let's see, now he's like almost 20 weeks, I think. 20 weeks. He's so cute. I love Frenchie so much. I know. He's um, the perfect little best friend of any. <laughs> dogs are life, seriously. Mm -hmm. Um but I, I love that morning routine. And I think it was great for the listeners to hear a little bit about what you do. And for everybody mm -hmm. who's listening, you know, your routine may look completely different than what Emily's look like. Um, I've talked about my morning routine before, but I think you'll always see that there's something that we need to do in the morning to connect, to allow ourselves to show up better and fuller so we can bring the energy and the love that we want. I, I mm -hmm. always tell my clients, I'm like, you don't want to do a consult with me if I haven't had like my morning routine and kind of brought myself into that place because mm -hmm. we do wake up and immediately think about you know, what's going on in the world and we scroll social media and we compare and we do all of these things that are immediately kind of grounding us in the negative in that victim mindset, like Emily had talked about. So it's only up to us to create the mindset that we want to create more of that victor mindset to be like, okay, I'm going to be the one who changes this, who wants to show up better and I just love that um, you are so intentional and you are spreading such great energy to everybody. I, I want to be conscious of our time, but I do have one more question. Um, and I know you've taken your social media recently and you've actually stood out and spoken about a lot of things. I think that a lot of influencers would be very scared to mm -hmm. talk about. Um, and talking about things, whether it's more political or COVID and vaccine based. And uh, we know people listening may not completely agree, but I think one something that's very admirable about you is you were like, I'm going to stand up mm -hmm. for what I believe in. And I'm going to be respectful to everybody in their own opinions. You never kind of put anybody's opinion down or anything like that, but you, you spoke your truth, which is something that I think um, we need more of, of that type of leadership overall. Um, so I'm just kind of curious as to kind of the mindset revolving around that with you mm -hmm. and um, what has kind of helped you stay grounded in that? Because I can only imagine, you know, the messages that you get, because I literally did one post one day about it and I just was bombarded. You know, I lost a bunch of followers mm -hmm. and 
it didn't feel good, right? It doesn't feel good. Um, but I also knew that I was standing in my truth. And one of the things that I think is really beautiful is when you do speak up and you stand up for the things that you believe in, um, it can make a lot of people uncomfortable, but it also gives so many other people the freedom to do it too. Absolutely. And I also think it's important and I hope that more leaders continue to speak out, you know, whatever it is that they believe in. And, you know, just to echo what you said, I, I think that it's important to do it in a respectful way where you respect other people's individuality, you respect their beliefs, you respect their opinions, because we're all created different for a reason. And my mentality behind it is the fact that if this is my last day on earth, I don't want to live some facade. I don't want people to like me because of who they think that I am. I would rather be the fullest expression of who I am and let that be my last day on earth. I would rather be the fullest expression of who I am and have people not like me because it's just the truth. It's just who I am. So for me, I would much rather have freedom. There is so much freedom in being the fullest expression of yourself because yes, people are not going to like you, but you don't have to feel like you have to have an image to upkeep. You don't have to try to people please and keep everyone happy. You get to be who you were created to be. And I fully believe that, you know, one of my core values in life, in my business in general, and it's becoming more evident more than ever um, is freedom. And it's because, you know, there's so many things that could jeopardize our freedom and, and it doesn't always relate to just the political world. It could also be freedom in relationships. It could be freedom in my mentality. It could be freedom from trauma. It could be freedom from old patterns that don't, you know, fit me anymore and don't serve me anymore. So freedom is so important to me. Right now we're in the climate, climate where it's being attacked on a, you know, political level, on a level of the whole country. And so I'm standing up simply for freedom, regardless of what the issue is, regardless of what's going on, freedom transcends any, you know, left or right or center opinion on anything. It simply says, I stand up for myself and for other people to have the freedom to live, breathe and think however they feel best fit for themselves and their family, you know? So right now, um, you know, that's in the, one of the smaller issues I would say that's coming out in is in medical freedom. And people always think that I'm like anti this or pro this. And the truth is it's not any of that. It's actually just pro freedom, pro freedom for me and pro freedom for you. So let freedom ring baby. I love that. And I think you're standing by freedom by saying, Hey, I'm also going to talk and share what I truly believe and stand up for that mm -hmm. um, and not live in fear. And I think that mm -hmm. just more people need to see that and hear that. And um, I love that we're able to share that today and you're continuing to use your platform to stand up for freedom in so many ways, but also be the role model that I think women and men honestly need more of um, these days. So thank, thank you for you. that. Yeah. And I just one more thing I wanted to add in, in that mm -hmm. as well. You know, I've spoken a lot about my faith here and my spiritual journey and just something to add in with that is you can go inside the Bible app and search the word freedom and look how many times the word freedom or liberty is in there. Even like God and spiritual principles are not meant to restrain us. They're not meant to put these like rules and, you know, strict things on us. It's, we're actually meant to have freedom in God, freedom in spirituality. So I think for me, it goes much deeper than just kind of wanting or, you know, desiring freedom. It's who I am at my core. And it's something that I wholeheartedly believe in. And I also feel is just a spiritual truth that we are meant to be free individuals. I'm not here to be a slave to anyone or anything. I'm here to live my life freely as a fullest expression of me, because if it's my last day on earth, that's the way that I want to go out. Beautiful. Mm -hmm. Emily, where can people find you, follow you on social media and get more of your inspiration, listen to your podcast? Yeah. Um, so you can go to Instagram. My name is Emily Hayden, Emily, and then H-A-Y-D-E-N. And in there, I have all of my links. You'll find my coaching program, Evolve X. You'll find my mentorship um, in there as well. And then also my podcast, Evolve with Emily. Um, Instagram, it's Evolve with Emily podcast. But again, if you just go to my Instagram page, you will find all the links and all of the um, everything to get to from there. Awesome. You guys, 
Um, Emily has been amazing here today and definitely go check out her social media links. I'll be posting them here in the bio. So you can just follow those links to check out her podcast. She seriously has an incredible podcast. She had like over 200 episodes that she's done, brings on a ton of incredible gas drops, Monday mindset, little solos that she mm -hmm. does that I listened to a bunch of this week. And I know it's helped me tremendously. So definitely go check that out. And Thank you so much again, Emily, for coming on the show today. Yes, thank you so much for having me. You're such an incredible interviewer. You're really good at bringing out the best in other people. So thank you so much. Thank you so much. All right, guys, uh, don't forget to leave a review, share this with a friend if you enjoyed it. And this has been Shared Madness.